Sid Meier's Pirates Live the Life. Released back in 2004 by Firaxis Games, Pirates gave you the chance to explore the seas of the Caribbean while plundering and searching for certain treasures. The game starts out with a character creation screen. It has very little customization towards the character's actual look, but how they perform in game. First off, the name of the character, then you choose the difficulty level of the game, then you choose from five different skills. Also, a year to start in, which changes the amount of ships sailing, how the economy is in different towns, and what countries are waging war on others. Then you choose the country you wish to sail with, English, Dutch, Spanish, or French. Different countries can also determine the difficulty with the amount of friendly cities, since usually two or more countries are at war with each other. The game opens to a short backstory of your character's family being captured and enslaved by a Spanish nobleman because they weren't able to pay up their debt in time. Your character manages to escape and 10 years later is where the game begins. After that though, it isn't necessary to actually save your family. It becomes an open-ended game where basically you can do what you want. Do what you want cause a pirate is free! You are a pirate! There are many aspects to the gameplay depending on what you're doing. First thing is sailing. Sailing is of course your main way of travel. But it's more than just that, it's also when you want to engage ships in battles, when you want to enter ports to trade, or land on certain parts of the world to explore to find treasures or find family members. The speed of sailing can be determined by a couple of different things. Mainly your ship has to do with a lot of it. It depends on your type, which can differ the best points of sailing, its condition because things like storms can damage your sails, which slow you down and the amount of ships you have, because if you don't have a proper amount of crew to man them, the other ships start to tend to slow down and then you have to slow down and wait for them to pick back up. Also, a lot of the time you will be entering different cities. There are five things that you can do in every city. Talk to the governor, which he will upgrade your rank, give you missions, but this doesn't happen all the time. And also he has a daughter, which you can get introduced to, and be invited to a party, but I'll save that for a little later. You can also go to the tavern, where you can recruit new men to join your crew. There's the traveler who can offer you different items, pieces of treasure maps, and information on different locations. Uh, the barmaid who tells you the location of pirates or quest enemies. She also tells you of ships carrying either a surplus of a good or a lot of gold. And then there is the bartender. He usually tells you where to find certain upgrades and which cities where certain goods sell at a high price and which governor's daughters are very hot. Which kind of creeps me out that he knows these things. Next is the merchant, which you can buy and sell all your goods, which can vary on prices depending on the economy of the city. Then there is also the shipwright who repairs and upgrades your ships. Certain cities will have certain upgrades so you have to go to different cities to get certain upgrades. Ports aren't always accessible. If you're an enemy of the nation, they will attack you on sight. But there is an option to sneak into town. Mainly, this is all about sneaking solid snake style. You can go to the governor's mansion to pay him a certain fee to take the bounty off your head. Or the tavern where you can basically do everything there. Sneaking is about avoiding the guards. You can hide behind hay to avoid being seen, or if you get behind a guard, you can knock him out. Also, if you get caught, we'll be thrown in jail and you will rot there for several months. But you can escape if you have certain items. Well, fuck staying in town too long. Time to start pissing someone off. Ship battles become a huge part of the game as well because this is where you get most of your goods, gold, and other ships. Ship battles are probably one of my favorite parts of the game. The rules of sea navigation apply in the battles here as well, with the wind, the condition of the sails, and the type of ship for speed. Also different ship types carry more men and use more cannons. If you plan to make a good warship, plan to have a lot of crew to man it. Crew determines two things during ship battle, how fast you raise the sails, and how fast your cannons reload. There are also three types of shots. The cannon shot, which does damage to the main hull, cannons, and minimal amount of crew will be killed. It also has the longest range of the three, usually good for the first shot and if the enemy ship is trying to flee. The chain shot, which does damage to the sail, which affects the ship's speed, probably the best shot of the three. 
because reducing the enemy's speed makes things a lot easier, especially if they're a boarding party rather than a warship. Then there is the grape shot, which mainly kills a lot of crew on the other ship. This is also good to slow down the reloading time of enemy ship cannons. Also there can be situations where you attack a ship and its escort where there will be two ships attacking you. Remember kids, every smart man knows when to run like a little bitch. Ship battles also lead to another action portion of the game, fencing. Ram your ship into the enemy and board them. You first start out on what sword to choose and each has different effects. Mainly you have three attacks. A chop attack that's slow but it does a lot of damage, the thrust which is the quickest but weakest, and a slash which aims at the lower body which is also slow but it does a lot of damage. There is also defensive moves. Duck where you can avoid the chop, parry which completely blocks the thrust, and jump to avoid the slash. If you block or avoid an enemy attack, it can cause them to go dizzy which reduces their speed and it makes them more vulnerable to attacks. The same applies to your character as well. Also, there's other weapons on the ground which you can use to attack. To determine how good you're doing, there's an advantage bar on the lower part of the screen that shows who's winning the fight. As this is going on, you can see that your crew and the enemies are depleting because they're fighting as well. If your crew's morale is up, they will fight hard. If your crew fights hard enough and depletes them down to one, the enemy captain will surrender. If you miss or take hits, your crew's morale will drop and can also be depleted which can cause you to surrender. You can eventually defeat the enemy captain by hitting them far enough until they fall off the edge, or some other unfortunate thing happens. Of course, after every victory, you get to choose what goods you want to keep, how much gold you get, and if you want to sink or keep the ship that you just fought. There are times where some of the enemy crew wishes to join yours, and you also have the choice there as well. Also, sometimes they have special crewmen, which you force them aboard your ship to serve you instead.